Hello again, everyone. You're funny, Andrea Cortesia, yes. You don't have to refresh if you don't want to refresh. <laughs> Just all of you here that are in Twitch and been sitting around for a while. It's good if you do refresh so that, uh, so that the stream will show up. Twitch has been a little funny about that lately. All right, so I have adjusted the mic for those of you who have said it's quiet. Does it sound okay now? Because this is going to be me talking to you for about a half hour. So let's just double check. I know, Latouine, you keep saying you don't want to refresh. You don't need a shower. <laughs> nice. Okay. Everything good? Yay for fixing mic. Okay. This is the piercing the veil portion of the day. Uh, piercing the veil was something that we used to do back uh, early on in the Kickstarter, shortly after Kickstarter days, where you could ask your questions of MJ and he would reply with your design answers. It was written format and we thought it'd be fun to turn it into verbal format. So you have asked your questions in the forum uh, and some of you with the beta one contest email and MJ has replied. So I'm picking out some of the uh, some of the more common maybe asked ones or the ones that um, are interesting or catch my eye and uh, you can have the answers to these. At the end we might have a special appearance by MJ and Andrew so hang out for that and don't let me forget. I don't want to turn the stream off without it. <laughs> you like hot tubs, interesting. Okay, let's get to the questions. And the first one is from Societal, who says, In one of Tyler's streams, we saw some of the weapon assets, including daggers and hammers, that appeared to come in four flavors, obsidian, bronze, iron, and steel. We know that crafting in CU is a magical process, but how much of the raw materials are based on real-world metals and minerals? Are there pure fantasy materials, like in other RPGs, uh, example, mithril, adamantium, <laughs> etc.? All right, and MJ replies and says, uh, we're starting with real-world materials as the base materials for the system. Uh, once they're in place, um, MJ's gonna add fantasy materials to the mix. Now, we can't use Mithril, which does belong to J.R.R. Tolkien, but we'll have plenty of our own to work with within the crafting system. There you go. Yes, copyrighted ones cannot be used. The second question is from Laughing Mime says, I did notice that there's an age secondary stat in the character builder now. Is this a stat we can add to at creation, or will our character just age with time? Will there be derived stats that result from making my character a bit more old and wise? Okay, and MJ says, the original plan was to have characters age in the game, and that hasn't changed. We don't want them to age enough to become decrepit, since the characters are supposed to be immortal, uh, but the magic that they use will allow them to become older, especially the giant races. Okay, Torin Wandersman asks, will the chances of veil storms only depend on the magic used in the area, or will some areas have a higher, lower chance of them in general? The answer to that is both. So it will depend on the magic, and some areas will also have a higher or lower chance of them. Further questions from Torin. Will we be able to craft items, portable or stationary, to calm or anger the veil? And yes, you will be able to do that. Question, will, will we be able to test our own structures in the cube for structural weaknesses? And the answer is yes, but there's no ETA on that. Hellspire, I don't think just spelling Mithril different will make it allowable, unfortunately. Latwin, you're asking about the strim, or what are you asking about? I'll wait for you to reply to that. Okay, more questions from Torin Wandersman. Uh, will we be able to run dry tests in cube with other people, like building an Arthurian keep and inviting friends to destroy it? 
<clears throat> Sorry. Can we do that without having to build those with in-game resources? Uh, MJ said in the live stream yesterday that that is something on our wish list. Absolutely. All right, and here, Latween, your question, since you're in chat, too. How nice. All right, a bit convoluted here. If island capture and movement works as you hope, will an island from the far side of the map be able to be pulled up against the conglomeration of capture islands, even though there would have been other islands between it and the ones already captured had the land never been broken? Or will it float a little off the coast until that realm captures the islands that belong in between and a jigsaw puzzle must fit together in a certain kind of way? Uh, let me rephrase it to make it clearer. Will island capture be totally freeform, as in any island that is capturable can be captured at any time? Or will it be along a chain? You must pull island C next to island B, not island A next to island K. Okay, so the answer to that, Latouine, from MJ is... Uh, right now, any island will be able to be captured without having to capture others in a chain. Uh, this is very subject to change, however, um, obviously since Mark is still working out his vision for how this needs to work over time. Alright. Uh, question from Dorale. Even though there are no more stretch goals, will we get the role-playing pack since we reached the goal, c correct? Um, I think that this person's talking about the animations for everyone uh, stretch goal, which was recently uh, on the website. Um, we have actually took we took down our stretch goals um, because of the beta one delay. Um, we want to demonstrate that we're doing everything in good faith, and we uh, this stretch goal was originally about outsourcing a whole lot of RP uh, animations that were fun to add into the game. So if you didn't know what that was, that's a little clarification before we answer the question. Okay, so Jirali wants to know, uh, will we get that since we reached the goal? And the answer from MJ is, of course, and stretch goals will be added back once we get into the beta. So there you go. I asked him, he said it was achieved. Okay, Dark Society Network asks, how is the gifting system coming along? Is it affected by the delay? MG says, it was one of the reasons for the delay. It is moving along, and I think we are almost there. Okay, question from Still Rain about Cube. Well, we have Siege in Cube to test our designs. How about Fire, or perhaps a Gravity on Off switch? And MJ says, as per above, hopefully. Okay, question from Medic. Since groups and guilds are going into the game soon, will we get to see the design docs for those systems before we start testing them? And the answer from MJ is no. Um, he has a backlog of documents to get ready for release, so there's no chance that the internal documents that you mentioned would be released before the older ones. Uh, a lot of you are excited to see the crafting doc. Okay, Nanalunk asks, uh, when, we, <laughs> when may we see the new improved cube and its updated UI? And the answer is, we'll let you know and we're working on it. Uh, hopefully you're watching up Periscope a few minutes ago and you saw that Corey is putting an update into cube right now, um, but there will be further ones um, giving you more stuff on materials, etc. Further question from Nataluk. Will the Founders Point store ever get cosmetic items like trees and plants that can be used to decorate our plots? Hmm. And MJ says, possibly, but only, uh, but Marcus said that there wouldn't be a cash shop uh, for the game. So even if we added cosmetic items to the game, they would have to be available to all backers and the ability to buy them would have to disappear at launch. So helping the game to completion via stretch goals is one thing, but post-launch we've said we wouldn't add a cash so shop, and we intend to stick to that. <laughs> yes, Max walked out a few minutes ago. 
There you go. So those are the piercing the veil questions for today. Uh, they will be put into the piercing the veil thread, which is here in the forum. Mm -hmm. And I'll show you. This contains all of the piercing the veils that have been so far, which I want to say like eight, maybe eight or nine, maybe. So they will eventually be numbered here in uh, YouTube, etc. So that here, hello, um, so that you can follow along with different ones. But you can see all the previous answers in that thread uh, in the first page, and these will get updated to that thread a little bit later on. So hang out for a second, and let's see if uh, and if and you are ready to do maybe a little. Um, pop in just to say hi. Hang on. Do you guys, do, the, do all those answers make sense to everyone? No, Max is not leaving. He's probably just using the bathroom. It's okay. Relax. Relax, relax. Okay. Hang on one second and we will uh, see if that's ready. Mark, Andrew, do you want to jump in? I'll come here and sit down, grab Max's chair, and can do a thing here. Yeah. Ah. Uh, okay. He's got a great hat. Um. So look, I just wanted to. Uh, we just wanted to jump in very quickly and say thank you all for the tremendous you know, response we've gotten so far to the announcement yesterday. Uh, it's been <laughs> absolutely <laughs> nothing but, you know, almost nothing but love uh, from you backers, from people who've even backed the game, I was told after uh, the stream, uh, hearing a Andrew yeah. and I talk. I, I liked the guy uh, from a certain forum who, uh, you know, I wasn't a backer before, but... I've decided to back the game, so now I'm going to complain at you about it. <laughs> that was great. That is great. The nice Star Trek hat, yeah. Yep. Uh, but yeah, so again, just wanted to jump in and say thank you all very much. We appreciate it. And as always, uh, we won't let you down. Yep. Back to the code. Back to the code. <laughs> back, to, back to not letting people down. Unexpected mark appearances. Huh? There you go. All right. So, everyone, hope you enjoyed the Piercing the Veil and unexpected visits from Mark and Andrew. Uh, and that concludes our streaming for the day. Look for any kind of extra stuff that we might do at the end of the week. Some of us are going, me being some of us, going to PAX East, and that's why the schedule doesn't have much on it for the next couple of days, because I will not be around. Uh, hopefully you'll come and check out our panel on Friday morning. Um, with MMORPG.com at 11 o'clock if you happen to be in the area. Otherwise, stay tuned for updates on the schedule uh, and live streaming for the rest of the week. And uh, it's been fun streaming with you guys today. So we'll see you later. Bye.